This is the Jazzy Nail Bender channel. We're talking about tools. Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be all about beginner tools. And here I have a list of beginner tools, except for this one and this one is something that I would, um, this one right here and this one are the same thing. They're just whichever way you want to look them up. But these two are for a specific purpose, and if you're not going to work with these two kind of items, then you don't need it. But I wanted to mention it because I do, and I prefer them to use for the specific items um, that I'll tell you about here in a minute. Let me get a couple things over here to show you. Um, these first few things comes in many different bead reamer, a uh, flesh cutter, a bit nose, a round nose, and a chain nose. I'm going to show you these pliers, but I'm just letting you see how they're, what they're called. Um, these usually come in any kind of sets. I first got mine at Walmart. Um, you can buy them, beetle long cells, different tools and the name of beetle on I hope that you can see it that's beetle on that's their name so you can get a set from them these right here are nylon pliers I would not recommend buying them they do not hold on to the wires but I'll talk to you a little bit more about them later on but this is just happens to be the only pair of pliers that I own of beetle on I would prefer to get some more but so here is the flesh cutters here are the, be the bent nose, the chain nose, the round nose, and the bead reamer. My set also came with a bead scoop, which these are good. You can get triangles, and I don't have my triangle anywhere near me. I don't know where I put it. But you can get little triangles that I like working with better. I don't even pick this up, but it does is nice to have a set of tweezers. But you can go to Dollar Tree or a dollar store somewhere and pick up a pair of tweezers that work for you. Um, bead reamer, what it does is most of the beads that you're going to be working with are either glass or acrylic. This one will hollow out the center for you a little bit more if your cord is not going through. Just be careful with glass beads. You can break them. So, But this is just uh, a type of file in and around perfectly good. Now, if you don't get a bead reamer, you can go to the hardware store and pick up a set of these and their files and they have this one that's round. Basically a bead reamer and I think there's another one that's round. I'm not sure. Oh, my round one just fell out. But this one's round too, so you can pick them up in the uh, hardware store and they won't cost you as much, but I have not seen them individually. Yeah, and that's the only one that comes in this set that's in the round. Um, and it's a little bit thicker. But there's a lot of different types of bead reamers that you can get. They come in sets. So this is the first set that I uh, picked up. I had a few other pieces before I picked these up. Um, just be careful when you're getting the flesh cutters. If you get them individually, make a note how big a, a gauge that you are able to cut with these because you are going to ruin these if you cut them with um, wire that it's not gauged for. So, and I would not cut, I wouldn't try to cut memory wire. Memory wire is a very strong metal and it will eat up these type of ones. That's why I have memory wire cutters if you're going to work with these. And basically how you work with this memory wire is you're going to take your round nose and form a loop somewhat like this at the end. Cut off after you've cut off the amount that you want to work with. You put a loop in one end, you string it however many beads you want on your your uh, memory wire um, fill it up and then you make a loop on the other end and that's basically it now this is a ring 
so it fits you can wrap it around your finger there is sizes for bracelets this is just the one that I had close to me um, there's also some ones for collar necklaces so this wire cutter actually cuts the wire really nicely very very I had another little piece I didn't want to break off another one of this but I will I'll show you if I try to cut it this is another wire cutter I got in a set I don't recommend these I don't like them they don't cut flush up against stuff but I wanted to kind of show you that this is not I'm squeezing as hard as I can and I can't even make a cut in this but if I were to take this one that actually hurt my hand <laughs> I take this one and I'm going to cut I don't even know where it went but it cut very smoothly it just popped off I don't know where it's at oh I don't think that was it I don't know it went somewhere but we did cut it just for effect I'll cut it again this time keeping my finger there you go see it cuts it it cuts it very nicely this is a um, I think I got it for around ten dollars on Amazon all of these tools you can pull um, you can buy off of Amazon any different brands um, of course this it's just a generic band I got from Walmart. I've been using it now. Substituting it for something from hardware is probably not going to be your best bet. I'm going to show you. Try to off of these. I forget what these called. I should go out there and ask my sister-in-law. Um, you see these little ridges on here? Hardware needle nose pliers, which this reminds me of needle nose pliers. They actually have ridges right here, and this is smooth. Some things that you're going to be able to find at hardware you can replace. I'll show you some op options that I have. But for some of these, this is smaller than what a needle nose plier usually is. You might be able to find some that are small like this in hardware. But these, you don't want ridges on here. Because that's going to mar your wire. when you're doing stuff you want them flat so that when you do things like this it's not going to leave any marks and I know it's hard to look my camera's not wanting to focus there you go you see no scratches you have some a little bit there because it, it was twisting it but that is the purpose is causing less scratches on your metal when you're working with them so um, the knee these right here form loops and there's tons of things online that shows you how to make loops um, I'm trying to find my makes loops similar to this Th this was an attempt to do a wrap loop but I misjudged so if you look this is just a regular loop and I don't know if I have a there it is this is a, a wrap loop so it makes things like that um, I'm gonna go ahead and mention these right here these are also there are three tier wrap um, they they called it a three tier wrapping um, looping plier three tier looping plier I've got one with a rounded, I call it a trough, I don't know what you would call this, but rounded side and it fits right in there and the wire will wrap around easily and then I've got this for the bigger wire. If you use a 18 gauge in this it's going to cause um, marks on the wire because of that, that's why I got these. I prefer these over this but by no means are these necessary and most newer people in jewelry making will probably 
um, prefer to try out these. I also have a set of, these came in some of my sets that I've gotten. And in fact, this is what I used to use first. These right here are round nose pliers that have, that are called four in one. Um, they have a wire cutter. This, is, they call this a jump ring closer. I would not recommend using these closed jump rings. They do make it easy to um, close this, like wrap loops, like or regular loops, like this. That has a little bit of an open area. You can kind of smush it together to where it's nice and closed now. But it will change the shape of the loop that you do. So just be careful on that. Um, it will, if you try to use them to, to close a, a ring, a jump ring, you can actually make it out of round. If you do just a little bit, you might be okay. But the preferred way is to take your bit nose if it's say open like this you take your bit nose or a chain note two chain nose it doesn't matter just two pairs of pliers and I'm gonna push this way while I'm rocking it back and forth like this I'm gonna push them both in and rock them back and forth to get to the desired closeness of the two pieces and that is the most accepted way to do jump ring this is according to the chainmail book that I have so not just something I just decided however if I'm not using my three-step chain I love to use these because I've got a wire cutter and I've got a round nose and I've got you know the the plier part of this as well it's four in one this is a four in one plier it has the round nose, the plier part, the jump ring closer, and the wire cutter. So I do find this little divot very helpful for some of the things that I do. So, um, But if you get a set with this first, this is going to make, it's going to serve your purpose is what I'm trying to say. Um, do not recommend these right here at all. I would prefer a flush cutter. There's also double flush, semi flush, a lot of different ones. Um, do your research online for those. I don't have a lot of them. So decide which one you want. I would suggest getting a regular flush cutter and some, some of these to file down. They'll, flesh cutters leave a bevel on this end that makes it kind of sharp. File them down. Use this flesh cutter. If you want to, you can get a double flesh cutter that leaves both sides. This is a double flesh cutter, about $10. It leaves both sides flat and won't um, cause a burr at the end of them. But again, that's... It does not take the place, in my mind, of a flesh cutter because a flesh cutter... Sorry can get very close I can get right up in there and snip that off if it was sticking out a little bit see with my double flush cutter I won't be able to do that it's very clinky what you have to do is you have to pull it out just a little bit see here I can get right up there and snip this right off right very close to the wire this one's not going to do that but I can get close enough to where I can adjust it um, what you would have to do to get this right where you want it is just pull it out a little bit say I separated it from the side cut it where you want it and then readjust it it is workable it's just I have both for whatever I need it and this I use for cutting off wire that both that way they're both sides are already starting out flush and I just go ahead and file it if 
I don't want to take the time to pull things out. Or you can when you're doing the wrapping. Just make sure you leave so much that you know you can get in there and cut it off. And then you just have to push it down with your pliers. Alright, next we have the split ring wire. Oh, well, we can talk about the crimp bead wire. This one is a necessary thing. You, you need it if you're doing um, any type of flexible bead wire. I do not recommend doing a crimp bead on monofilament because monofilament will just get cut. And when I'm talking about crimp beads are these tubes right here. And I don't think I have wire. Hold on, let me pull out a piece of wire for you. All right, this is a beady lawn flexible beading wire. I am going to use I'm going to take and I'm going to wrap this into here and show you what a bead crimp does. And then I'm going to take my bead crimp, crimping bead. I got both of them in. All right. So I got it all the way up there to the end. You can leave a little space if you prefer. I mean, it's just whatever you want. Normally, I put a wire protector on first. I usually don't do anything without wire protectors anymore, but that is a different video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crimp it. And you see how it's formed a semi-crescent. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to put... I'm going to put both sides of the crimp side to make the crescent moon ta the side hit these two and then I'm going to crimp it and because sometimes just crimping like that still makes it able to move I go in with my flat part and just smush it down even more just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere now from here if you have a bead crimp cover I don't have access to one right now but you can put a bead crimp cover over that to make it even better more aesthetically pleasing and less uh, sharp um, the, the my favorite bead crimps are beadalon because they don't leave sharper edges they have a rounded side here down at the ends on both sides so that's what I usually use these are just some of the stuff that I had left over and don't think I have any split rings in there this is before I even use split rings um, next plier I want to talk about is a split ring plier and I don't know what I did with my split ring that I had up here ah here he is so basically what this is it opens up your split rings now even if you just want to get this to open up your split rings to put your keys on it will it will help your nails how to use this is you want to put it to where you can slide whatever it is you want on there and I'm holding it with my thumb so that it doesn't move if I were to push it in it would just rotate on me and then I would take my chain nose, my bent nose, whatever I want, and just rotate it. And there you go. Your split rings on there. I use split rings instead of jump rings because they're stronger. They're, they're going to be harder to open. This is one of the weakest part in any jewelry making place is this right here. So that's why I use that. Um, aside from these tools, some other ones that you might want to look into are flat bill. Now this is a coating, hold on, uh, this is a coating called Tool Magic. It comes in a little jar. Let me pull mine out. This is Tool Magic and that's what this is. 
it is a silicone I believe Prevents tools from marring scratching wire designs it is a non-permanent easily removable it doesn't say what it is I'm, I'm assuming that it's silicone and it tells you right here how to use this but I'll go over it real quick what you do is you take your pliers and you open this up steer it with a stick of some sort put them in take them out and it will be coated I sit them like this on top of a coffee cup on the edge of the coffee cup let them dry once they're dried overnight it says you can do it uh, remove slow it says dip the plier but not hinge remove slowly and steadily place pliers upright without touching anything in a tool rack or coffee mug works well allow to dry to two to three hours or overnight and I choose to do the overnight and then I choose to sometimes dip them twice so these are what's called flat um, flat nose pliers they're also I think called duckbill um, I have quite a few of these because I find these are thin enough to get into chainmail very easily if you look at the bent nose or the chain nose they're kind of fat up here these are not so bad I have some that are worse like here see how thick these are they're just not very good at all for getting into chainmail spaces when you feel um, it's chainmail is something like you've seen on hold on I'm just gonna show you this is chainmail and so when you're trying to get in between different ones say to open this one right here it's really difficult to get into here and to put something like this in there it is possible and especially the smaller ones you have to the way you have to make these you have to finagle them in and the fatter ones make it harder to do so I went to getting a, the thinner duck build ones or flat nosed or whatever you want to call them as thin as I could get it and it worked much better so these right here are nylon covered pliers and I do not care for them because they do not grip the wire very well but I do like these to take the wire that say may be bent and I can straighten them out just by going like this so that's what I use these for I would not be purchasing these again if I ever want to purchase another nylon wire which I probably will there's one like from Belon that has a screw here and it screws through to connect to these um, plastic piece nylon pe pieces and it makes it to where it's refillable so that's the one I would prefer because this was like $15 I want to say it was pretty good price and after these wear out it's trash so I'd rather get one that I can refill and pay just a few dollars for the refill instead of having to buy a whole new piece even if it was the same price of buying a whole new piece because that's just a waste there's no sense in all that so when those play out, play out I will not be repurchasing them this is Beetleon version of a nylon round nose again I just use these to straighten out wires the flatter ones work out better but at least this is reusable so that's if you are hooked on getting a nylon I would suggest you get one with refills because you can already see how much damage that actually has come from using it's not going to show you but there's a lot of damage on here from using it with wire so I would buy the coating myself the tool magic to coat if not, you can take some masking tape and cover your uh, tools, but Tool Magic is more of a, the, not, the, the silicone feel to it 
makes it to where it grips a lot easier. If you're interested in making your own jump rings, I've got a tool in here that will work. I also bought this for another purpose. It will allow me to make different shape, round shapes other than just jump rings like bales and stuff. And I have a bigger one than this. Oh, it just fell into another area. So these are tools to make your own jump rings. Um, you can use this to make a bale as well. There's specific pliers to make bales, but I got these to make jump rings. And if you don't know the size of this, because it doesn't say, you could just measure by using a caliper. Um, that's what this is, is a caliper. And I want to point out that when you measure the caliper, you're going to measure right here. It's said in a way that this is the line that you read off of. So if this was oops, here, it's 10 millimeters. Or, you know, you would measure, if you want inches, you'd measure there. So whatever that line is, so see, that's a half an inch. Uh, let's see, I've got something over here that we can measure. So this is 26, yeah, 26 millim millimeters and just a shy over one inch. So this makes it easier to find out the size of maybe some beads that you're working on. There is a book that you can get. Hold on. This is called The New Beading's Companion. And this is what I got all my students by whenever they first started. It's a very small one. You do not have to find this exact one. There's other ones that do. Hold on. Let me pause while I get the page I'm looking for. All right, here's the pill, the page that I was looking for. It shows you the millimeters, and you can take your bead right up on here. And this is going to be, see how it's bigger than 20. But this will give you some ideal on the smaller beads that you're going to be working with, because you're probably not going to have beads bigger than 20. And there's other charts out there that you can get individual charts and stuff, but... I like this because it gives you some other information like this is how many beads per 16 inch strand that you can uh, hope to get like a two millimeter that's how much so it gives you 20 millimeter there's only going to be 20 on a 16 inch strand so this is a nice book if you want to get it if you get another book there's other books out there that will tell you the same exact stuff so I don't know all of them but this is another triangle it was like 20 cents you scoop the beads up and then you can pour them into whatever tube or container that you wanted to use so it just dumps them right in there so um, let's see tweezers are always a good thing to have I like these because they cause pressure and they'll hold on to my thing while I'm working with um, stuff. The only thing is this does have some some ridges so if you wanted to use these with wires just put some t tape, some uh, masking tape in between and it'll be fine. Otherwise you can grab some tweezers from the from your um, different kind of Um, sets that you get for beauty. This is another thing that I would suggest to get if you want. I'm sure you probably have four or five of them. This is what people use to cut monofilament and it also cuts this flexible beading wire pretty well so and it will get right up where you need to go to so you can put this in your stash for your beading as well and usually I don't use this one I usually don't use this one either so 
I usually just use this one. So you could just take one out of your kit that you've got. And I think we're almost done. If you're working with bead weaving or a lot of metal material that is um, metallic, this is a telescoping magnet. And I love this. If I lose my needles, I can go into the couch and it'll pick it up for me. So that's why I have that. Just a little trick. Now, if you're going to be making rings, either bead weaving or wire making rings, you want to have... A, a ring mandrel they're all the, over the place on Amazon and you also want ring sizers if you're making rings for people and we're also going to talk about this is called a chasing hammer in the field of jewelry but it's also called by a ball ping hammer and you can see right here I bought it for a dollar eighty or seven dollars and eighty eight cents from a discount hardware store near where I used to live in Knoxville and it's the same exact thing as a chasing hammer this ex same exact one in jewelry will cost you twenty dollars so there are some things that you can go to a hardware store and pick up they also have these these were dollar ninety nine at the store near Knoxville it was a workshop a tool outlet and it's a um, a nylon hammer that can be used to strengthen wire to work hard on the wire without flattening it so that's what this is good for or you can straighten your wire if you're doing some rings you can actually take I've seen one lady do it she has her mandrel and she takes and hammers the wire so that the um, when you do wire rings they're wrapped a few times um, in fact I have one right here so what you can do is put it on and get it all straightened out for you self so and this is going to work hard in this stuff for you and you can see there's a And you can turn it around and do the same thing. And this is aluminum wire. So you can, um, I was trying to do some type of knot, but this did not turn out. But you can see this part of it is actually very now shaped nicely. And it's probably going to be a little bit harder than when it was because I actually worked it a little bit. So, it's a mess, but I'm still going to try to revisit this one and try to get it right. It's supposed to be like a Celtic knot, and they had a picture of it on Pinterest, but no instructions to do it, so I was trying to figure it out, and I did not do a good job, but I'll try again. And I think that's about it. Yep. So, um, my next video is going to be, I've already started to make it. This is going to have resin on top, so is this side. Um, you're going to see me do this side. This side is basically the same step as this one. The only difference is, instead of shells, I used these little um, charms. So, And I painted it with acrylic paint, so you're going to see me show this how to make it how to fill it with a design of your choice and next time bye for now oh and by the way if you like my channel that I'm starting I know it's just new and I'm still in the process of creating the channel Please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it.